I, I, I would like to, um, I'm going to read this, this, this uh, section to you, okay? When you told, this is me talking, Neil speaking. When you told me very early in this conversation that we are all the cause of our own deaths, the first thing that came up for me was that if this statement is true, then every death is by definition a suicide. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. If we're all the cause of our own deaths, and Home with God says that's true, we are all the cause of our own deaths, then every death is by definition a suicide. Yeah. Are you looking at the book right in front of you? Yeah. Oh good, read it aloud. You read it. <laughs> I've been thinking about that ever since, and God <clears throat> answers? That is not accurate. The fact that everyone is at cause in the ending of their life does not mean that they are deliberately choosing at a conscious level to do so, nor does it imply that they are doing so in order to escape some condition or circumstance. Causing something and consciously choosing it can be two entirely different things. What? I don't understand. You can be the cause of an accident, but that does not mean that you consciously choose it. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. That is a very important observation. Causing something and choosing it are not necessarily the same thing. You can be the cause of an accident, but that does not mean that you necessarily chose it. At least not at a conscious level, which is what's being talked about here. So let's be clear about what is being communicated here. You are all at cause in the matter of everything that is going on in your life, including your death. Most people are not consciously aware of this. Two conditions must, must exist in order to classify a death as a suicide. One, you must be aware of what you are doing. That is, you must be making a conscious choice to die. Two, you must be making the choice to die for the purpose of escaping rather than completing your life. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference. One purpose of this conversation is to help you get in touch with the sacredness of your physical life, to assist you in coming to understand that life in the body is a gift of unspeakable proportion. I said earlier that death is a powerful moment of creation, and it is, but it is designed for going to something, not, from escaping, not for escaping from something. Again, death is designed for going to something, not for escaping from something. Now, comfort may come from knowing that the person who has committed suicide is all right. They're okay, they're loved, and they, have, they are never forsaken by God. They will simply not have achieved what they set out to do, that's all. But that is important for anyone who is contemplating suicide to understand. There is no such thing as punishment in the afterlife. It is those who are left behind who are punished. They experience an incredible shock from which they may never fully recover. All of them feel an enormous loss. Many spend the rest of their lives blaming themselves. They wonder what they did wrong. They agonize over what they could have said that might have changed things. The sad thing is that those who end their own life imagine they are going to change things, and they are not. Ending your life in order to escape something does not create a situation in which you escape anything. If you're thinking of ending your life in order to avoid something, you should know that you are contemplating something that you cannot do. A wish to avoid that which is painful is normal. It's all part of the human dance. However, in this particular moment of that dance, a person is trying to push herself or himself away from something that the soul has come to the body to experience, not to escape. Because that person has found the experience to be painful or difficult, he or she may step into a void where there is nothing to face and nothing to fear. But people cannot step into a void because there is no void to step into. A void does not exist. There is no void anywhere in the universe, not anywhere at all. There is no place where nothing is. Everywhere you go, the space is filled with something. Your own creations. You will face your creations wherever you go, and you cannot escape them 
nor do you wish to, because you have created your own creations in order to recreate yourself. It will not benefit you, therefore, to attempt to sidestep them or to dance around them. Dancing your way to the void cannot be done. Let me put this another way. A void dance is not possible. And as you read further here, you'll come to understand even more deeply, this is what I would say to anybody who is contemplating suicide, please read chapter 10 of Home with God. I would give them the book and say, please read chapter 10 of this book. What it says essentially are three things. One, you can't avoid what you think you're going to avoid. Because you will simply, two, you will not be punished or um, in any way harming yourself spiritually. However, you will choose, as the book later describes in portions I have not read, voluntarily to come back and live this life over again from the beginning, going through the same thing, bringing you to the same moment like Groundhog Day. And you will keep on coming back to the same moment, and then you'll presumably commit suicide and leave again, the same moment, commit suicide, leave again, until you finally get to that moment, the 1,342nd time or whatever, and you'll go, okay, I get it. And then you'll move on and you won't commit suicide. And then you'll move forward with your life. And, that's ex and you will do it not as a punishment, but because, in fact, you will finally get clear that you do not wish to sidestep what you deliberately what you came here to experience precisely to experience i have had occasion in fact to counsel with a number of people who were preparing to commit suicide uh, and i have uh, well i don't know if i stopped them perhaps but uh, nobody that i ever have talked to has in fact wound up ending their life. On the other hand, I had a person leave one of my retreats one year and go home and commit suicide three days later. Uh, that was about two or three years ago, wasn't it? And uh, I also had an experience once where a man called me who I knew years ago and said, Neil, I need to talk to you right now and if you don't come over here right now, I'm going to kill myself. And it was 2.30 or 3.30 in the morning, and I said, I said, look, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I can get there right now, uh, but I will see you first thing in the morning, and the, in the next morning I was called that he had shot himself that night. Now that's not something you f forget very easily or can forgive yourself for very easily. And I've had that experience. So these days, if someone calls me and says, if I don't hear from you in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to kill myself, I, I, I respond to it differently. I don't take responsibility for that man's choice, but I can't say that it impacted me profoundly, as you can imagine. So um, that's what I would say to you about suicide, and that's what I would say to anybody about suicide. Um, but I would speak to them much more gently at first. I wouldn't say these things at first. I'd say these things last. At first I'd say, what is so horrible that you feel you can't face it? What is it? And I would work with them on the issue at hand. I've done that with several people who were looking at ending their life and uh, And I, I, I use a process, by the way. I don't know if it's in your process books or not. You don't have your process books yet, do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Oh, you do? 14. Okay, you have the 14 processes? I thought there were about 25 now, but <laughs> 14, the, the 14 <laughs> processes? Uh, I do a process with people that goes like this. You can do this process right now. It'll take you about um, two minutes to do this process, okay? Stand by. A two-minute process, which I would do with a person who is uh, contemplating uh, ending their own life. Think of, of the problem that's facing you now. Think of the biggest problem that's facing you right now. By the way, you can all do this right now. 
Do you know this process? We did it in September. We did it in September? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do it again and don't say anything. Don't, don't spill the beans. Think of the biggest problem that's facing you right now, whatever it might be. I'll give you some, I'm really, do this. It'll take about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Think of the biggest problem that's facing you right now. Picture it in your mind, feel it, whatever it works for you. Good. Now think of a problem that's smaller than that problem. Think of any problem that you've either had in your life or you've seen someone else have, that you're aware that happens in life. Think of a problem that's smaller than that problem. Just think of it. Good. Now think of a problem that's smaller than that problem. Think of another problem that's even smaller than the problem you just thought of. Okay, good. Now, finally, think of a problem that's smaller than even that problem. Think of the smallest problem you can think of. Smallest problem, but that's still problematical. Think of the smallest problem you can think of. <coughs> Good. Now, think again of the problem that you have right now, the biggest problem you have right now. Go back to your biggest problem and just think of that for about 10 seconds. What is that problem? Good. Now think of a problem that's larger than that problem. Think of a bigger problem than that. Just think of one. Good, good work. Now imagine an even larger problem. Imagine a problem even larger than the one you just imagined that a person could have, whatever it might be. Please imagine that problem. Okay, now think of the largest problem that you imagine a person could have. Think of the largest problem that you imagine a person could have. Or that you could have. Largest problem you think you could ever have. Good, now Think again of the problem that's facing you right now. Good. What's the problem? See, just notice how you feel about the problem you have right now. So how do you feel about the problem you have right now? Without telling me what the problem is, because it doesn't matter, but does it change in any way how you feel about the problem you have right now, Ross? It doesn't feel nearly as enormous. Judy? Well, now I'm thinking about it, and I wasn't thinking about it before this process. Yeah, but does it change in any way that you felt about the problem? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, it feels much smaller. Manageable, manageable, manageable. Did anybody else have a, an experience of something like that? Most people do. If you enjoy what you've just seen, consider making a donation so that you can have even greater access to more downloadable media and other content as well. Or visit our store and check out our calendar as well.